It's horrifying. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. You're I don't know Homer Simpson. I, I never met Homer Simpson or had any contact with him, but I I'm sorry. I, I can't go on. That's okay. Your tears say more than real evidence ever could. Female reporters are often at the center of the bullseye. Are they, though? I'm honestly going to try and keep an open mind when looking into this Taylor Lorenz case. Uh, but uh, first thing I take objection to there is, uh, is this expression that women are often the center of the bullseye for online hate. You know, uh, slightly over 50% of the population are women. So they're often going to be the target of online hate. If online hate is a thing that exists and they're online as much as men are, of course, they're often going to be the target. You know, you'd expect slightly more than 50% of the time for them to be the target, right? <laughs> I'm going to need some hard data on that. Also, I don't like the expression center of the bullseye. The bullseye is already, you know, a thing that you aim at. And uh, the center of the bullseye, I mean, seems uh, like hyperbole. It seems like, a, it seems like it's superfluous to say the center of the bullseye. And I'll raise you one. If, if women are the center of the bullseye, men are uh, 180. Yeah. How about that? You know, we're, we're harder to hit, but we're worth more when we get hit and we get hit by three darts, so. 73% of women journalists saying they've experienced online attacks, while 30% say it has impacted their work. Seems like a very subjective thing, you know, to, to say I've been a, a attacked online. Uh, I mean, what do you mean you've been attacked? I mean, we're going to look into some proper cases here, you know, people being doxxed and whatnot. If you ask people if they've been attacked, you know, narcissists think they're being attacked all the time. You know, paranoid schizophrenics. God, who are they interviewing? <laughs> Have I been attacked online because I've had some nasty comments? Someone made a nasty comment about my eyes the other day. They said they were far too far apart from one another. I didn't like it. Would I say I've been attacked if I was surveyed? Yes. I don't know if I can say this on TV. I'm going to rape you. A fine question. Can, can I say that on TV? And uh, I guess uh, if you screamed it violently at the presenter with no other context, then the answer would be no. You can't just go screaming, I'm going to rape you at people. That's just inappropriate. But, uh, to say the least, can you quote what some online troll has said? Yeah. Does this constitute an attack? The person who wrote it is obviously some weirdo loser. Does that person actually have any intention of doing anything? Do they know where you live? Is it a real profile? Who, I don't know. I, I feel like context is always important. L like, can I say that sentence? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> you can. If you're quoting someone, you, you can't just scream it randomly at someone in the street. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not speaking from experience. Hey. Someone said, wrote the words, I'm going to rape you. Yep. Yep. Journalist Taylor Lorenz is a columnist for the Washington Post and was targeted nearly one year ago in a segment on Fox News. She's at the very top of journalism's repulsive little food chain. Host Tucker Carlson mocking her after she called for an end to online harassment. So this is a really important part of the video because here we see how MSNBC tried to attack Tucker Carlson uh, making out that he's responsible for inciting online attacks towards Taylor Lorenz, when in fact what he was doing is trying to call out her hypocrisy, which has become poignant in the last few days because she is actively inciting the doxing 
of the administrator of the Twitter account Libs of TikTok, which is what we're going to get into in a couple of minutes. And uh, it's absolutely bizarre that you see one side accusing the other side of doing exactly what they're doing. It, it's 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 very blinkered. It's a very blinkered way of looking at the world. I think. Let's have a look at a few more of the details. Now she's at the center of a new study by NYU researchers, among the first to actually quantify online hate against female journalists. You know, I rewatched Terminator 2 again the other day, and uh, and it's one of those films that you you go back and uh, every couple of years and you rewatch it, and uh, and and you hear things that you hadn't heard the other 25 times you'd seen it over the last. 30 years of your life and uh, <laughs> you know uh, I noticed first of all the opening scene when the machines are crushing the skulls on the floor there's a battle between machines and men it's set in 2029 now I always thought well we're getting close to 2029 and they're way off because <laughs> you know the, the nuclear war starts in 1997 according to that film and uh, so, so, so that's where we end up after, what, 30 years of war. Um, but uh, it might just happen over a much quicker period. <laughs> Who's to say where we'll be in 2029? Uh, but what what I, you find surprising is, like with Star Wars and stuff like that, they, 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 they don't show the more mundane details or... They can't make these sort of mundane, everyday expectations about everyday life uh, for the future. You know, you don't see people eating and drinking and going to the toilet as much as you'd like. And uh, <laughs> and uh, nowhere, in no sci-fi film from the 80s, 90s, 70s, whatever, do I believe anybody foresaw, or even in their darkest premonitions, the funds of New York University going on studies of the quantification of online hate directed at women specifically. But here we are. This is the moment that Carlson aired that segment. Yes, we see this really dramatic rise. Using large scale data to measure online language, they tracked violent and threatening tweets directed at two female journalists after being targeted by two male media figures. Researchers found that attacks against Lorenz went up as much as 144% after just one Twitter thread. For another journalist, they went up 65%. No such thing as bad publicity though, right? And, uh, and, and here's the thing, right? So obviously hate is going to go up, but I bet in that same period their followers went up, uh, people supporting them went up. You know, if you get mentioned by somebody of high profile, if this, God forbid, this video explodes and I get a load of haters, <laughs> I'm sure I'd get a lot of followers as well. And uh, the people who hate me, people who love me, people who think my eyes are too far apart from one another. I, I'm of the view, if you, if you can't stand the heat, then uh, then get out of the kitchen. You know, if you're a journalist and you've got a big online following and presence and you can't cope with the fact that you get a lot of hate because you're so partisan, you know, you're clearly uh, nailing your colours to the mast and you're clearly on one side and against the other. It's just the climate, you know, if you can't take it. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying it's nice that people are saying these horrible things. Of course it's not. It's pathetic, but it's going to happen. And uh, there's only so much that uh, online administrators can do to, to eliminate all these uh, quote-unquote toxic comments and activity. Yeah. Lorenz and digital and reporter Kate Sawson say these types of attacks have changed their lives and their work. There's reporting that I know that I would like to do or that other journalists would like to do that we're not able to do because it's not safe enough for us to do them. Well, you know, the, the, there was a time when journalists uh, <laughs> were doing exposés on terrorist groups and infiltrating drug cartels, you know. Not all journalists did that, 
you know. And uh, you know, the risks were somewhat uh, higher, I would say, <laughs> for someone who's uh, infiltrating the mafia than for somebody who's saying that they, uh, I don't know, don't like conservatives. You know, the, the, the stakes are higher <laughs> in one uh, than the other. And, uh, you know, it wasn't just somebody making a nasty comment on Twitter. It was, uh, you no, know, they torture you to death. So, And they're not alone. This is after I did a report on an increase in the number of white supremacists running for office. Condescending journalist C-word deserves a rope. Obviously, I'm a person of color. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a reference to a noose. See, this is the problem again with, with context and, and interpretation. Everything's open to interpretation on, on Twitter, on online. You know, you, you can't hear the tone of what people are saying. I mean, deserves the rope. She, as a person of color, has taken that as a reference to the noose, to lynching. Uh, does the person who wrote that think that? I don't know. I mean... An old expression was uh, we, th something that you would say about people you don't like is, uh, you know, let him be hanged. No, hang him. You know, he's, uh, it's like you don't care what happens to them. You know, it's like go to hell. Let him go to hell. It's, 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 not, it's not a literal expression of what you want to happen to them. It's, it's an expression of indifference uh, or dislike, right? So, is this any different to what we would have been saying in cafes and bars um, before the invention of the internet? Uh, I don't know. How old is this person? What what do they mean? <laughs> do they just mean, ah, fuck her, you know? Which is not nice, you know? It's not something that we need to be doing. It's not making the world a more positive place, but... I don't know. I feel like if I see a comment like that about myself, I can take it with a pinch of salt. It's more worrying when people are getting doxxed and their home address is being revealed and uh, pictures of their family are being shared. Uh, that kind of thing is more worrying, which is uh, what we're going to get into now. Are you getting messages like these? Yep. yep. Hey, nice job on that story. You soulless effing c Hey, that's where I draw the line. There is no way Taylor Lorenz is a soulless effing C word. A thousand times no. 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 Then also you'll see there's these, there's many people that are tweeting, um, you know, here's, these are Taylor Lorenz's loved ones. They have everyone. photos. Wow, these are all photos of your family members. Yeah. Children. All, yeah. They'll, they'll threaten children. They'll threaten my parents. I've had to remove every single social tie. I had severe PTSD from this. I, I contemplated suicide. It got really bad. You feel like any little piece of information that gets out on you will be used by the worst people on the internet to destroy your life. And it's so isolating and terrifying. It's horrifying. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you're fine. You're <laughs> it's sorry. overwhelming. It's really hard. So those things are a bit more worrying, of course. Uh, people uh, getting photos of your loved ones and um, you know uh, targeting them, and uh, it is it is a problem, uh, but. Who's condoning that? Is this being incited by Tucker Carlson calling out her hypocrisy as a as a journalist who's supposedly standing up to online attacks and at the same time orchestrating online attacks? Yeah, I would say again uh, in and a point that Taylor Lorenz is making about the uh, administrator of libs of TikTok is that a lot of this information is already available. You know, photos of her loved ones, if you're a high profile journalist and you've got an open Instagram account and things like that, you know, photos of your loved ones are not going to be hard to come by. And I don't know if that's the case. Uh, I don't know how open her information is. I don't know how um, 
difficult it was for people to find that information. Uh, uh, so I can't really judge how worrying those specific attacks were. But, again, who's condoning that? And who's inciting that? I mean, there are going to be weirdos everywhere, and if you expose yourself in the way journalists do, some of them are going to find you. Uh, I don't know, it seems like uh, either you can take it or you can't. Uh, when there's a serious threat to your person or to, to your loved ones, then uh, we'll deal with that, but um, so long as nobody's specifically saying that you should be physically attacked, you can't, you can't really blame them for, for, for what a couple of psychopaths say to you on Twitter. So then, so then we come to the great irony of this whole story, which is the fact that she is doxing the admin of Libs of TikTok. So let's get into that whole mess. Well, I'm, I'm grateful to hear that you're not intimidated. Were you a little surprised to see, of all people, Taylor Lorenz, who complained bitterly when we used her name on the air <laughs> several months ago, who whined and cried on television because she had PTSD because people were criticizing her online. Were you surprised that it was her who came after you personally and tried to destroy your life? Yeah, I thought that was really humorous. I, I, it added a, a really nice, nice layer of humor on top of the whole story. Um, and I think that the fact that it was Taylor Loren, who is a known, you know, hypocrite and she is known to dox people, the fact that it was her that was doing all this, um, it, I think it just helped people uh, rally with support for me. Now, I've come across the page Libs of TikTok on occasion, and uh, normally it's just videos of people doing things which are, you know, to more conservative-leaning people, uh, somewhat abhorrent or, or, or embarrassing or unhinged in some way. And, uh, yeah, it's just sort of poking fun at what they see as uh, extreme political opposition. Um, the accusation is that they're uh, inciting hatred against uh, members of the LGBTQ community. I don't see it that way, but then <laughs> in the same way as I don't see somebody insulting you on Twitter uh, as the same thing as somebody harassing you in the street. I just, you know, I, I don't think the two things are often comparable. I just I, I just don't. Um, I think when a threat becomes real, when it's physical, then then it's then it's worrying. Um, and I, I do like the way the creator of this group is presenting her argument. It is absolutely humorous that Taylor Lorenz uh, cries on television about her PTSD, her severe PTSD, you know, again, talking about people who escape drug cartels or war veterans. They, <laughs> you can have PTSD for a number of reasons, I understand that, but I just feel some people need to have a thicker skin sometimes, I, I, you know. But whatever, I'm sure if you haven't been exposed to a lot of danger, a lot of insult, then a few nasty comments on Twitter can give you PTSD. Have you noticed, I mean, I know you're not a psychiatrist, or perhaps you are, I don't know who you are, um, but are you surprised that the people who are the most deeply enmeshed in narcissism, who talk about themselves the most, are also capable of the greatest cruelty? Have you noticed that trend? Um, yes, I've noticed that a lot. I've noticed it with a lot of TikToks as well. Um, I think it's a little bit of a trend on the left. Yeah, I, I'm not sure Tucker uh, posed this question uh, very well there, but uh, if he doesn't mind me saying so, uh, but uh, <laughs> it, it, what is it? Narcissism. It's this thing, I, I've been talking about it a lot recently, uh, thinking about it a lot, and uh, I, I don't think there are more narcissists now, maybe there are, um, but I feel that narcissism has become magnified uh, by social media and therefore it's it's more present in our lives. We see it manifest itself far more often when we scroll through Twitter and YouTube and whatever. 
we can see narcissism everywhere because of course narcissists want attention you know not everyone who wants attention is a narcissist not me with my youtube channel <laughs> And you are going to get a lot of narcissists online because narcissists do want attention. Um, but the reaction of uh, narcissists when they're criticised, no matter how constructively so, is to try to illegitimise and uh, destroy that criticism and destroy the reputation of the critic, right? So, is Taylor Lorenz a narcissist? <laughs> I talk about narcissism all the time on this when I see narcissistic traits, I'm uh, I'm drawn to them. <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't know. I, it's something I find fascinating. I think they're people who go through life uh, fooling people for a while uh, and fooling other narcissists a lot of the time. The funny thing about narcissists is that they don't know that they're narcissists. They think ge they genuinely think that they deserve nothing but praise. That they are. Uh, underestimated, the uh, um, undervalued, under underappreciated. Anyone who in the same field who's doing better than them, it's because they're uh, lucky or corrupt in some way. And um, uh, yeah, Taylor Lorenz, I don't know. Uh, she seemed to get her words out perfectly. Um, you know precisely and concisely at the same time affecting this kind of crying and talking about severe PTSD I I, I don't know it, it does uh, it does seem that she might have some narcissistic traits I don't know yeah I, I, I talk about I, I obsess over myself so I'm willing to to hurt you so what's your status as since we have you on the phone how are you doing tonight where are I mean you don't need to tell us where you are but how has this affected your life this Jeff Bezos piece well, it's, the past two days have been very chaotic and overwhelming. Um, I had to make some travel plans, you know, really fast, but I was not planning on earlier. So there was a little bit of coordination that had to happen. Um, and I'm now in a location where I don't think anyone would find me, um, not in any of the locations that Taylor Lorenz leaked or that anyone can find. Um, yeah. But... I, it's, it's been a little bit tough, but I'm not going to let this get me down. Well, I hope we see you in our studio someday. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Yeah, so it, it, is, it is absolutely amazing that a woman who comes on TV crying in and, uh, and giving an in-person interview uh, with her real name and showing her face um, claims to suffer from severe post-traumatic stress disorder and then inflicts the same... Uh, experience on a on another person on another person uh, in a similar situation, but with different a uh, different political uh, alignment or uh, affiliation. Um, it's okay when I do it. Is the message I get from that? You know, uh, Taylor Lorenz thinks she can play by her rules, but others have to play by the rules she sets for them. <laughs> right. So it's. It's absolutely ironic. It is narcissistic. I'm willing to go out on a limb and say to L Taylor Lorenz is a narcissist. In her defense, what she says, if you go on her Twitter, that's not me doxing her. Go to her Twitter and have a look at the things she's retweeting, the things she's saying. In her defense is that all of the information she wrote in her article about the creator of Libs of TikTok was publicly available. Eh, that's a half truth. You know, it was, you had to do some digging to find her name and uh, the places where she lives and works and all of those locations that she's now afraid to go to. Uh, so that's a half truth. Um, what would I say about the creator of Libs of TikTok from what we know about her? She didn't go and do an in-person interview. She didn't show her face. She didn't use her name. Uh, and she claims to not be in any of the locations that were revealed in Taylor Lorenz's article, which would suggest to me she is somewhat more genuinely concerned about the threats she received than Taylor Lorenz was about the threats um, that Taylor Lorenz received. And, um, and the tone, the tone of voice. And I think it is important to go on your instinct sometimes. She's not playing the victim. 
and uh, she's saying, yeah, look, I'm taking precautions. This is what's happened. Uh, they've doxxed me. They've revealed locations uh, where I, uh, uh, as to my possible whereabouts, and I'm avoiding those locations, and I'm not going to let it get me down. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely more partial to the creator of Libs of TikTok than I am to uh, uh, Taylor Lorenz. And... Um, and the, the, the problem is with this story for me, the disappointing thing, the, the sad thing about it is that we're all just going to take sides, aren't we? Uh, according to our political beliefs, the left are going to take Taylor Lorenz's side, largely, and the right are largely going to take the creator of Libs of TikTok's side, and um, we will have got nowhere again will have got further apart so yeah what a what a time to be alive